I was just, Mr. Chairman, I was just fascinated to hear your opening statement because for this whole Congress, we've been hearing you and your colleagues talking about how oil prices and production are so high in this country, but apparently you found out the same thing we did, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, that oil production is up and prices are actually down. And so now it's not because of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, I guess it's because of the previous administration. So, you know, talk about shifting the goalposts all the time. What, what we need is a strong energy policy, and I'm gonna talk about that. Something else I wanna talk about, Mr. Chairman, is I wanna bring a little dose of reality to, to what you were saying about inflation, because for the past two years, we've been hearing you and all your colleagues talk about inflation is out of control and high. So today, the Consumer Price Index report just came out a few minutes ago. That's the report that measures inflation, and it was just released this morning. For example, inflation with groceries, food at home, finally has stabilized to zero. Food costs are still too high. I'm not gonna deny that. But the fact is, inflation with food is going down, and we need to continue that trend. For energy, it was even better. Inflation for all energy was negative 0.08 or 0.8% in August. Prices, energy prices actually went down. That's great for the American family. It's not great enough yet, but it's the right trajectory and we need to keep on going with this team. I wanna talk about what happened four years ago when we were facing a pandemic and the, and the devastated supply chains and the economies that were shut down. Shortly after the pandemic, Russia's invasion of Ukraine began, further exacerbating supply chains and driving prices higher. Since then, the Biden-Harris administration has worked, and apparently it's starting to work, to lower energy costs for everyday Americans. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, America currently produces more crude oil and natural gas than any country in history. But while we are seeing record production domestically, gas prices remain too high as big oil and gas companies return record profits and, ma and pay massive stack, uh, stock payoffs. Uh, we had a hearing in this subcommittee, or I'm sorry, in the O&I subcommittee in 2022 when I was the chair of that subcommittee, and I had six oil and gas executives come in to talk about why their companies were earning so much profit as the Americans struggled to pay at the pump. They said it was because their shareholders demanded that they get as high a price as they could, and lo, it came to be. So it didn't have anything to do with low gas production or any of the other things that my colleagues are saying today. So um, I, 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 guess I'm, I guess it's campaign season, so we're gonna be having this hearing and we're gonna hear from some witnesses who will hopefully shed light on how corporations are earning more than ever while Americans are still paying higher prices and the steps that the Biden-Harris administration has done to strengthen the energy supply chains, which is what's gonna bring down prices. In March 2023, the House passed H.R. 1, also known as the Polluters, Polluters Over People Act, the majority's number one legislative priority. This bill was a giveaway to the companies profiting most, uh, most off the energy prices that the bill claimed to combat. 17 months later, the majority still hadn't sent that bill from the desk over to the Senate because they know it's a failed policy. Also, we spent legislative time on a lot of anti-efficiency bills, like, for real, this is the name, Refrigerator Freedom Act. It's not just a silly title. Independent estimates have found that conservation measures Republicans are seeking to repeal put billions of dollars into the pockets of consumers. And finally, one thing I wanna talk about is how the administration has tackled the long-term problem by focusing on energy supply chains at home rather than outsourcing our energy demands. I've got a chart, because why not? And what the chart shows is that the U.S. has produced record crude oil this past year. Not only did we surpass Saudi Arabia and Russia, the U.S. is producing more crude oil than any country ever. This increase is helping to secure the energy and economic security. In other words, President Biden and Vice President Harris are unleashing American energy. And this progress 
is the direct result of policy choices from this administration. Now, if, if you look at, you can see this. In the last administration, this is the record, but now it's going up even more because of these policies. So I, I, as I said uh, at the beginning of my remarks, I guess it's the silly season, but at least on this side of the aisle, we want to talk about facts, and we want to talk about how energy prices can be brought down even further for the American public. I yield back. General yields back, and I recognize the chair of the full committee, Ms. Rogers, for five minutes. Thank you, Chair Duncan.